Hey guys, Mike at the Summit Hot Rod Shop out here. We're getting ready to stick one of these Summit 700 R4s into a 32 Ford with a small block. Uh, I wanted to go over a few things, uh, explain some issues uh, we have with uh, returns on these transmissions and what to watch out for. Also want to go over um, some of the features and things you might see with these transmissions. And, and first off, um, it's important to know every one of these transmissions is dyno tested on a transmission dyno for proper shift function, park, reverse, hydraulic pressures in, in all the gears, and also a torque converter lockup. If you pull this out of the bag or the box and the bag has fluid in it, and you've got some fluid, it's not used. It means it's been dyno tested. We drain them and then we ship them, but they are tested for full functionality. So it works when it leaves our place. One thing, uh, I would like to talk about today is um, proper insulation of the torque converter into the pump. Uh, there's three notches you gotta go for. The biggest mistake we see guys making, and, and it's our number one return issue, is getting the hub notches into the tangs on the pump gear correctly. You cannot pull this transmission up against the block and force the converter into the pump. The, pump, the converter has to be all the way back in the pump before you put the transmission in, and then you pull the converter to your flex plate. So I'll go over that installation in a minute here. The other thing I wanna talk about is the TV cable. It is shipped, installed. This is not a kick down cable. This is not, or a passing gear cable. This is a throttle valve cable, and it has to be adjusted correctly for full extension at wide open throttle to maximize the line pressures in this unit to keep it from burning up. That's our second most common failure that we see with these transmissions. So we'll talk about adjustment on this after we do the torque converter install. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to put this converter into the pump on this uh, on the 700 R4. There's three notches you've got to watch for when putting a converter in. Uh, this converter comes pre lubed with some trans gel on the hub. If you don't have uh, something on the hub to, to let it glide in the bushing and uh, seal, you might want to put a little trans gel or some white lith or maybe even just a little bit of axle bearing grease or something like that would be fine. Uh, light, a lightweight grease. Uh, when you put the torque converter in, you've got the stator pump, the stator support, the input shaft, and then the tangs for the pump gear. This converter and most GMs have a pair of notches in the converter hub that go into a pair of tangs on the pump gear. Some of the, some of the newer stuff in the Fords have two flats and, or D shapes or that go in, uh, 4L80s do as well, that's a little more trickier to get in. And the overdrive transmissions with lockups have an O-ring on the end of the input shaft. You need to make sure that O-ring is on there and you want a little grease or transmission fluid or whatever to help that O-ring slide in and seal that piston in the front of the converter uh, cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this converter. And it almost always goes right onto the stator support first. That might have went into the input shaft. And then I spin them and push them in. I haven't worked in a shop when I was younger. I did a lot of transmissions, so I just usually work on this and spin it. There it went. There's all the way in. And I'll go around a little bit. So I went three clunks there. Now, when you get this all the way in, on an open bell housing, you can put your fingers in the back and you can't get your finger between the case and the back of the transmission, or the back of the converter. On the one piece bell housing, it's a little harder to do, but you'll see this transmission is back, or this converter is back from the bell housing flange, at least an uh, inch and a quarter probably, inch and a half. If you go to put this transmission in and the pads on the converter touch the flex plate before this bell housing surface touches your engine block, stop, back up, spin again, and Try to work that back in there because it's not all the way in and it's going to break the pump gear and your transmission is going to be junk. Okay, number two return problem and, and headache with guys with these 700s 
is the TV cable. This is not a kick down cable or a passing gear cable. It is a throttle valve cable. It controls the line pressures as you extend your throttle. So the number one thing to remember at wide open throttle, you should not be able to pull this cable out anymore. So you would grab this with a pair of vice grips or something like that and pull it out and shouldn't be able to pull it out anymore past this bracket as your throttle lever is fully extended. Uh, they are adjustable. You have a, you just push that in and the, and the cable amounts adjust from the bracket. Some of the levers and that are on the market don't have enough throw. You may have to elongate or fabricate a bracket depending on your carburetor or your fuel injection or whatever else to move that pivot point away from the throttle shaft to get enough throw on this cable. Things that are telltale signs you don't have enough cable pressure on the TV cable or on the, there's not enough tension on the cable is uh, short shifting. You'll start your car and drive away and it'll shift into third gear by the time the car's going 12, 15 miles an hour. Uh, other thing, it'll just feel soft. It's like it's, and it'll burn up. You can burn this thing up in a city block if it doesn't have enough throttle valve pressure. Um, so what I like to do is adjust to the point where the shift, the one, two shift is late and then soften it up from there. So you'll, you'll get a, a delayed shift when, you, when your throttle valve, is, your pressure's too high. It'll feel like it's hanging on while driving normally. And then you can back off a click or two on your bracket to get a, uh, a softer shift. But when you've got that set correctly, you should have a one, two up shift at 12, 15 miles an hour, a two, three up shift at 20 to 25 miles an hour, and a three, four up shift at 30, 35 miles an hour, something like that. The other thing with all of our overdrive transmissions, 4L60s and 65s uh, and 700s. The third failure I see is converters not locking up. You have got to lock up the converter in overdrive. With the LS swaps and the 4L60Es, I see guys not hooking up the, having the tune correct or hooking up the um, torque converter lock up and that'll overheat and burn up a unit while it's cruising on the highway in fourth gear. So you gotta make sure your tuner's got programmed lock up on the 4L60Es and on the 700s, we sell a kit to put 12 volts to the plug on this side of the case to lock up the converter in overdrive. That's another uh, failure we see is no lock up. Okay guys, in review, three things with these 700s, 4L60Es. They're all dyno tested. They work when they get to you. We want to make sure you have good success because shipping transmissions back and forth is a headache. First, make sure the converter's all the way into the pump gears. Secondly, TV cable adjustment, that's the brain of the transmission. That controls all the shift points, controls the line pressures in the transmission to make sure it's applying correctly. If you have any questions on this, do not hesitate to call us. Lastly, torque converter lockup on these 700s and 4060Es. You need to make sure this thing locks up in fourth gear. Guys, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call, email, whatever. We, uh, we've got staff on hand to help. Um, I'm Mike from Summit, and thanks for listening, and good luck.